Praise God. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray to God that this is it. <laughs> um, hey, Johnny. Hey, Colonel. Hey, guys. Uh, how you doing? Good. Uh, uh, John, Colonel Juan, you just say hi to everybody, and then I'll get Johnny. Hello, everybody. There is the Colonel. All right, uh, Johnny. Hello. How are you, brother? I'm all right, bro. I'm yeah. Okay, everybody. Okay, y'all are there. I can I can tell y'all got it. Everything's fine. We got it up and running. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, guys. Let's just kick it off and let's, uh, Johnny. We're just gonna we're gonna have a repeat of the phone call we had earlier today. There's there's a couple things uh, that uh, I just think be, because of what we do that uh, we need to uh, kind of convey that message to everybody, and I'll bring them up one at a time. One thing is about being knee-jerk reaction Christians, and it, uh, the moment someone hears bad news, they're packing the car, running to the Ozarks, instead of a Christian that when the bad news comes, I know that my understanding and what I've read in the Bible, um, you know, like Daniel, when the edict was put forth that, you know, you weren't allowed to uh, pray to your God or whatever, that he went ahead and went and prayed to his, to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. So he didn't run around with his hands in the air, freaking out, running to all his friends, going, what the hell is going on? The first thing he did was he he went to the Lord with it. And and that is one thing that's really on my heart about. And, and that goes for me, too, because there's some times that, uh, you know, uh, I have, you know, friends like Johnny, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go, oh, no, and I won't stop and pray. I'll just, bah! <laughs> Johnny gets some of those phone calls from me, and I think every now and then I get one, or, one of those from him. But uh, I want to talk about that a little bit, Johnny. Kind of, you were telling me about, you know, that email you got, and they were actually packing up to to leave. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we kind of kick it off a little bit. I think uh, I think the whole idea that I'm trying to drive at, and I think the point of the conversation today was, guys, there's a lot going on, and we all know that. And uh, Johnny and I, I mean, we we have a special nickname for ourselves. It starts with the word doom, and <laughs> I'll just keep it at that. Uh, you know, just we're constantly hearing about doom and doom and gloom and, you know, and how many people have come out and it's just flooding the Internet these days about who, you know, everybody seems to be hearing from God. And God is telling everybody, you know, the Sumerian gods are returning and they have this date and they have that date. And it's, it's, it's just an overflow. And I just, I just want to talk about that. Johnny, why don't you kind of launch into the reality that that's what's coming across your desk, too? Yeah, amen. Um, well, I, you know, I had to uh, do a lot of growing up as a Christian, and I'm still growing up as a Christian. I still have a long way to go. Um, having the peace that passes all understanding, like the Bible says we're supposed to have, uh, doesn't come naturally. Um, our natural instincts are to be like I was two, three years ago when I started Tribulation Now. And uh, I've listened to I don't know how many dozens of uh, martial law alerts, um, claims that FEMA was going to clamp down on parts of the continental United States, um, you know, make a run for it because your life is at stake. I've destroyed my marriage. I've received endless, endless uh, emails from people all over the world who have destroyed their marriages. That's not what the Bible says to do. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is that the Bible is very clear that we are supposed to be laser-focused on the kingdom of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Matthew 25 is, you have to look at the whole chapter. It's a combination punch. Jesus is talking about the wise and foolish virgins at the same time he's talking about the talents and rewards. We're supposed to be about our Father's business. We're supposed to be so busy serving Jesus Christ and doing things that, you know, good things on behalf of the kingdom, helping the widows, getting the poor, um, you know, whatever it is that, that we feel led to do to lead people to Jesus Christ. That's that's what our commission is. That's what our great commission is. We should be so busy doing those things that we don't even notice 
all this other stuff that's going on. You know, it's not there, but on the other hand, it's okay to watch and be a watchman, but the whole world has embraced this notion of being watchmen. You know, so you've got three years ago, you had a situation where maybe three, four years ago, you only had a handful of websites. Now, everybody out there has a website, and everybody's a watchman. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of YouTube channels that have sprung up in the last year of people who are now, quote, these Eco 33.6 watchmen. A lot of them, a lot of these people even call themselves watchers. Okay, and that's fine. Praise God. I'm, you know, the, the, the harvest is a plenty, and the laborers are few. So praise Jesus. All right. But the problem that we have is that we still have a lot of people that are kind of young Christians out there. They don't really understand Philippians 1:21. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. Until you completely understand that concept. Until you long to be with Jesus Christ more than anything, and to leave this earth should be your goal. To leave this earth as soon as you possibly can and be with Jesus Christ should be your goal. The only reason you should be on this earth is to bring other people with you to the kingdom of heaven. That's it. Right. That's it. All right? And so the, the problem that I'm seeing out there is that I, I came, you know, I'm uniquely qualified to speak to these issues because there was nobody more frightened and freaked out than myself three years ago. Right. Be, yeah, amen. So, so yes, I, just recently, um, you know, after I did the article re, re, regarding the 188-day cycle and some of the coincidences, and I still have, I have another email right now that just came across my desk that uh, some of the researchers out there are still embracing the potential for another megaquake. Uh, uh, to uh, to hit potentially later this evening, uh, possibly tomorrow, um, you know, and that's fine. Um, you know, I could I could I could go off for an hour plus just talking about you know tr trying to nail down the 188 day cycle that these people are claiming exists, trying to nail that down and saying well just because the electromagnetic influence of Nibiru or Planet X is is in a a, a pair of you know, in, in alignment at this point or syzygy at this point, that that earthquake is going to happen at precisely this time. That's really not how earthquakes work. That's not how the tectonic plates work. That's not how the rocks and the upper strata of the earth work. They don't work in concert with, you know, hyperdimensional hyperdimensional torsion field. That's not how it works. It's an analog issue. It's not digital. You don't flip on a switch and say, okay, Nibiru, go ahead and rock the world. It doesn't work like that. There's a, there's a window of time that these things can potentially happen in. Okay, anybody who has even a ninth grade understanding of science should understand those things. Praise Jesus. So this is fine, but I've got people out there that are freaking out. They're going to head to Montana. They're running for their lives. And I'm like, you know what? Why? What, right. try, what, what is it about your life here on earth that you love so much that you're running from the kingdom of Jesus Christ? Are you not sure of your salvation? And if you are sure of your salvation, then why do you want to stay here on this earth? You I know, John, I don't want to John, Johnny, that's a perfect opportunity just for me to just say this very quickly, and I'll let you continue. Guys, the Bible's so clear about this. It even says, you know, in, in Luke 21, it says, And the very powers of heaven will be shaken, and men's hearts will fail them for fear of those things they see coming on the earth. And then it says, Whoever tries to save his life will lose it. Okay, well, let's just do it at a different time zone right now. Let's pretend right this second we walk out, and the very powers of heaven are shaken. Okay, and, and we're like, whoa. And, yeah, I mean, and we see the atmosphere rolling back. Okay, well, you know, and you see what you know, what looks like the most massive uh, alien invasion you've ever imagined. Okay, at that moment, if you're doing what the Bible says, it says, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. It says, whoever tries to save his life will lose it. So let's take that case scenario. That's what we're supposed to do then. So I got a cool question. Why would it be any different now? You know what I'm saying, Johnny? Like, why would you need to, just like the what you were saying, you know, pack up everything and race to Montana? You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? 
that's I don't know, I've had people this is we talked about this before Johnny and and again that's why I I believe you know if if you're a drug if you used to be a drug addict or you're you know, in the sex parties and you know sorting coke all day long like I have by the way then it makes you uniquely qualified I believe if you've lived in in in, in that sin if you've lived in that sin before and you and the Lord has brought you out by his divine providence and by the whole by the power of the Holy Spirit and you've finally gotten to a point in your life where you're starting, you've left the bus station and you're actually starting to walk in holiness and you are for the first time in a thirty year Pentecostal uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, you're finally beginning to realize what it means to not be afraid of the earth and not be afraid of mankind and to rejoice that you're part of the, the heavenly office of God, to rejoice that you're part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And to know your salvation and be sure of it and to trust in Jesus Christ, when you finally get to that point in your life, it is a relief. And it took me a long time to get to this point, and praise God, I have, I, you know, there's no reason in the world I can think of that anybody, you know, people call me and they say, well, my, you know, but I got kids. Really? You got, if you have children and you feel that you have to save the lives of your children, then have you done a very good job explaining to your children who Jesus is? Right. Right. Your children should be more excited about going to heaven than you are. When and you know my kids are the one I struggle with is my daughter. My daughter, you know, she's got one foot in the world and one foot on the bus, and uh, she knows. You know, I, I, I've I've shown all my kids everything. They know what they know what I know for the most part. You know, as far as the spiritual gifting, everything's upside down. They know about the sheep and the goats. They know about, you know, the DNA problem. They know about, you know, everything the Lord's shown me. And they're they're totally comfortable with it and they understand it. And they know the reason why we have this sin problem. And it's not some mystery to them. And so it's more tangible and they can deal with it. And praying is actually you know, a real thing. They know that they're speaking to God. They they know that they are speaking to God when when they're taught when they're praying. It's not a matter of I wonder if God hears me. They know that God hears them. Well, amen. And, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, you, you're raising your children in a godly atmosphere. They're constantly surrounded by the scripture. They're constantly hearing you go to the Bible over and over again and talking about Jesus all the time. Of course, they're excited. The problem is that, unfortunately, most Christians, quote, don't live that kind of a life, not even with their children. So what happens is we're very carnal in how we think about things, which is exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite of what the Scripture tells us to do. I mean, if you look, we talked about this too, Johnny. Um, as a matter of fact, this is really interesting. Um, it's Romans 8.1. There, there, there is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not walk in the flesh but are of the Spirit. So you have to add the last two parts of that. Um, you know, uh, you have to add the, the two do not walk in the flesh and who walk in the Spirit. You have to add that to that verse. That's, that's the only way the verse has any real meaning. Okay, so, so you know, that's critical. I mean, you, you got to walk in the Spirit. You have to be kingdom-centric in every way you think. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be provided unto you. That's right. how you have to think in every single part of your life. Okay, it, it also says, trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all things, in all things acknowledge God. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and you. your paths. Yeah. You know, we don't have trust because we don't embrace the Word of God. You have to read the Word of God. Who, who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. Read John, uh, the first uh, four or five verses of, of, of John uh, chapter 1. Okay? It's, it's all there. The, Jesus is the Word. The, and and, and, uh, and, and the Word became later, flesh. And here by the Word of God, right? So Jesus and the Word become our faith, and you have to live and dwell in it in every way that you think. Everything that you think has got to be Jesus Christ-centric. It's got to be the Word of God-centric. And when you finally get your arms around that concept, you convert into a spiritual being, and your thoughts become spiritual, and then you feel, Johnny, this is one of your favorite phases, alienated by even being here on this earth. Exactly, and it because that, that, it, that's a perfect example, because... 
even the takeover of the world by this, let's call it the last kingdom in Daniel, you know, the miry clay mixed with the iron. Yeah, because of this takeover, now the takeover is basically complete. So when you get saved, you do become an alien. Because now that the takeover is complete, once you get pulled out of the ant's nest, you are no longer part of the hive. And therefore, you become alienated to the system. And the system hates you. It all makes total sense. I mean, once you see it, it's ridiculously obvious. I want to read something out of Ephesians 5. Um, this is uh, this is just you know uh, I need to throw this in everybody just if you got your Bibles it says be ye therefore followers of God as dear children remember that as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once be named among you as become as saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather of giving thanks. For this ye know, okay, now listen closely, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Therefore be not partakers with them, for you were sometimes in darkness, but ye are now in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay, so, you know, we, we know that there's this kingdom of darkness, this kingdom of light. You know, my, uh, my ministry has been to expose the kingdom of darkness and, you know, just decrypt everything I can to show you guys yeah, it's really there. And and then, you know, our job is to walk, you know, the Bible says, so as you received him, so walk in him. You received him on faith, so walk in him in faith also, um, which is going to bring me back to the point. This stuff that is going on everywhere now, it's everywhere. There are so many sites and so many people that n seem to know, you know, the dates and they know to, they seem to be able to, you know, have more information in a much shorter period of time than it took me 10 years of the Lord pouring it into me to understand. They seem to have it within, you know, a, a few months and they guarantee everybody it's all correct. And, and there's so many of them. It's being, it's becoming impossible to wade your way through the information and disinformation. And that's, that's one thing that is really kind of, kind of really concerning me as of late is there's so much stuff out there. I saw a guy, guys, I don't know if y'all know this, but uh, there's, there's a guy that's got a site now and he's, he's, um, he's modeling my site, what I do. And he's saying that he's decrypting all these, you know, different images, um, and he's he's blocking in the shadows. But here's the point: that that is what the Lord told me to do. By the way, uh, and he showed me every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Creator of heavenly lights, not like them who cast shifting shadows. And so when I decrypt things, I I come about it. You know, the Lord will grab a hold of me depending on what the image is, and he will reveal to me the hidden imagery in it. And if I can't, I can't discern it, then one way to quickly discern it is to just block in the shifting shadows, and it becomes a set of images. But this guy is coming up with stuff that is so far out there, it is just mind-boggling. And I'm talking images of, you know, clowns and relating them to Batman and, and then saying, well, you know, and, and if you look at uh, the devil, he is a joker. He's laughing at us, and he's a representation of the joker. And it's just going all over the place. And I'm just sitting here going, you you got to be kidding me. These things are just getting convoluted, severely convoluted. And so, you know, it, it's in this late hour, 
I'm trying to encourage everybody, stay with your Bibles, guys, now more than ever. And if it doesn't segue or it doesn't match and it does not line up with the scriptures, then you need to stay away from it. And I encourage everybody with whatever it is I'm doing, same thing. You need to take it to the scriptures. And if what I'm showing you and it's not in the scriptures, then you probably need to, you know, uh, sound an alarm and get away from Jonathan Clack if it doesn't line up. So uh, I, I will put myself to that test. Anyway, Johnny. Yeah. It's 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 everywhere, just uh, just like you were saying uh, earlier on the phone today about the variety of people that seem to know everything about the Sumerian gods returning. <laughs> I'm I'm just yeah. Well, uh, what's really what's really troubling for me to see happening, and it's sad, but it's true, and um, actually it's nothing new. Um, I'm reading a book by. Uh, Reverend Blackaby, uh, about hearing the voice of God. It's actually entitled that, Hearing the Voice of God. Um, you know, uh, but anyway, uh, the, the, so historically you've always had different people who believed that they were hearing God's voice, and they stepped out and kind of said that because of what they were hearing from God, it was, you know, there was new information. You know, they would claim that there's new information, uh, that, uh, you know, that we can now uh, be polygamists because they're hearing from God and now it's okay, or they can do this now because God is telling them that it's okay to do this. The, the fact of the matter is that God doesn't contradict himself. So you're not, you always want to measure, you always measure everything against the Word of God. If you are not reading your Bible, if you are not in your Bible, you are in extreme danger. And I am not kidding you. Okay, you can go out on YouTube.com and search on Pittman, P-I-T-T-M-A-N, and the word placebo, P-L-A-C-E-B-O. Pittman, placebo. And it's Howard Pittman, and he was, a, for 30 years, a Baptist minister, and he died on an operating table. And he came within literally one or two breaths of going to hell. This guy was a 30-year good Baptist minister. That's how close he came to going to hell. So all you Christians out there that think you're Christians and think you can live in sin and you're going to be just, you know, take the, take the wide road to heaven, you better watch out. Do your homework. All right? But anyway, the reason I bring this up is that, that here's the deal. We've got a situation out there right now that is awful where an amazing amount of people out there, even good people, good people, Christians, I believe, who mean well, people who seem to me, as best as I can tell, they appear to be good Christians, good, kind-hearted Christians that are on YouTube that are prophesying and talking about their dreams and their visions. Um, and and let, let's just take a look at this scripture right here. In Mark 16, 21, it says, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it for you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned, Jesus turned to Peter and said, quote, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me. Now, if Peter, one of the chosen apostles, could have Satan speaking through him, right. Yeah, it doesn't get any more clear than that, all right? And don't, you know, you could literally do a four-hour show on just this topic alone. So what we're seeing here is not necessarily bad, evil Christians in every single circumstance. What we're seeing is a surge of people who can sense that the time is near. They know that we're at the end of the age. They feel excited. They want to do something on behalf of Jesus, and maybe they're just not real mature Christians, and maybe they don't know their Bible real well, and they're doing the best they can in some cases, I believe, to share with people what they believe the Lord has put on their heart. But if you read Deuteronomy 18.22, and Deuteronomy 18.22 should be your best friend today, okay, and it says, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if that thing does not happen nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, but you shall not be afraid of him. Okay? So here you have the world's greatest prophets that ever lived 
the Levitical Deuteronomy period of time. This, these are the greatest prophets of the Lord that ever lived, and they spoke. They were human beings. They made mistakes. They assumed. They presumed things. They wove their best ideas into what they thought that they heard the Lord tell them to say. Okay, if that can happen to the Deuteronomy prophets, that can definitely, it's not guarantee it, it's happening to these people today. So if you don't know your Bible, okay, I heard a woman, a wonderful woman, she, I've heard her before, she's wonderful, and I've heard her recently say that the bride is going to be rebuking the locusts. No, the bride is not going to be rebuking the locusts in Revelation 9. <laughs> Because it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9, it says, God hath not appointed us to wrath. So if we're not appointed to wrath, and Revelation 6, 17 clearly states that the day of the Lord's wrath has finally come, we know where the wrath begins. It begins just prior to the trumpet judgments. We're not appointed to wrath. We're going to be out of here, okay, before the wrath begins. That means the fifth trumpet, when the locusts are here, the bride's not going to be here rebuking the locusts. You need to know your Bible, people. Praise Jesus. Yeah, and you know, and it's true. There, during these times, there's a lot going on, and guys, here's kind of where I want to go with this. There's so much going on. There's so much information. There's so much disinformation that no matter what comes down the pike, you need to be grounded, and you need to say, Lord, um, I'm going to bring this to you. Lord, I'm not just going to jump in my car and freak out. I'm not going to go running away. I'm not going to hide my kids, you know. Oh, you, you don't need to. Uh, and here's where I want to go with this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not have fire retardant suits that they put on. And they said, okay, now throw us in the fire. So it wasn't God plus a fire retardant suit. Daniel didn't have a little can of aerosol lion away spray, you know, that he sprayed in the face of the lions and when he got thrown into the pit. So when he got down to worship God, he knew that he would probably be, you know, uh, found out and he trusted in God anyway. That is what shows your trust. That is the thing that proves you trust God is when you're willing to step out and say, it doesn't matter. Now, now that that's been said, um, this upcoming video that I released uh, that's coming out, I put some stuff in there that I have literally opened myself up to complete and utter destruction um, from, I guarantee you, there will be groups that will try and get a hold of it and come after me because I exposed uh, pedophilia in the Catholic Church as being hidden in the images that I decrypt. And by the way, for the record, I got the most uh, inoffensive image I could put in this video as not to completely, you know, disgust other people or to, you know, make my videos unviewable because some of the imagery is so bad that I literally cannot show it in public because of the ramifications that would come from, you know, uh, the fact that you're putting out, you know, uh, uh, explicit content material out to the general public, and I could get a lot of trouble for that. The, the one that I allowed out is the most inoffensive, but I prayed about it, and I take everything very seriously. Uh, I took it before the Lord, and I said, do you want me to put this in, and the reason is because I know there has been a uh, uh, an incredible amount of people that have been, you know, abused and by the Catholic, you know, religion and by the Catholic, you know, hierarchy of whatever system of demonic worship that they're in. And I'm sorry, but it's true. And the Catholic Church is is, um, and I'm not talking about Catholic people. So before everybody freaks out, I am talking about the institution of mother goddess worship that is manifested through the Catholic Church that has demonic priests working under their, you know, under their influence. And that has become, you know, uh, evident with all the people that have been sexually abused through that system. Therefore, when I decrypt these images of the Virgin, it, I, I, I can guarantee you many of the images I've decrypted that are different contain like information. So I had to bring it out. 
because if it helps one person um, get over it or get past it or a, they're able to understand what happened to them, that it was part of a demonic doctrine. It is in the doctrine of the devil to do this to little sheep so they can't recover from it. And it's a very poignant picture. It's only one image, but the image tells the entire story. And so I had to put it in there, and I'm leaving myself as wide open as open gets. But it's out there. So now, moving right along to current events and speaking about information and things that are coming out. You guys, uh, Johnny, uh, and I hope you'll stay with us because I, I sure appreciate your input, Johnny. So, um, we got Colonel S.C. here. And uh, Colonel S.C., I'd like to bring you on right now and 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 let you know. Um, I let everybody know what's coming down the pike and what what you've been made aware of and how you've been made aware of. First of all, everybody, uh, Colonel uh, SC is on now. Welcome, Colonel. Thank you. Yep, yep. Um, so anyway, um, let's talk about it, Colonel. So why don't you just kind of start with the, just the whole deal? I mean, what's the like, you gave me a phone call earlier and, you know, and, and you told me uh, that your sources um, have told you that we're going to a DEF CON 3 situation. Yeah, we're going to DEF CON Charlie. Uh, as of noon today, it happened. <clears throat> and on the 23rd, they're going to be running nuclear drills. What's weird about this one is DEF CON 3 is higher than we've ever done drills with, but they ordered me to stay home. I got a direct order to be here. And it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know how to, t I can't say it right. It's just, this one just doesn't feel right to me for some reason. Maybe a drill. I'm not telling you it's not. But we are, the United States is now, on, and the military, on DEFCON 3 alert, that Char DEFCON Charlie. Yeah, uh, for those of us who are not, you know, up with military uh, information and nomenclature, yeah. DEFCOM three basically what is what right, what what right is the for imminent? So yeah, so in the last time we were in DEFCOM three was nine eleven. No, we only went to DEFCON two, I believe, in nine eleven. Wikipedia says three. And in, in Wikipedia says it, DEFCOM 3. Um, that might be something worth uh, jumping in Google real quick. So anyway, but so the latest, and, and I, you know, guys, I can't ta ta talk about everybody, um, and I can't mention certain names, but I had another phone call today, and whom I spoke with, who I hold uh, in per, per very high regard, someone, and they told me that this information is correct. Um, that um, the military has gone to a DEFCOM 3 um, state of readiness. So once again, um, uh, what what would be the ramifications of DEFCOM 3 for, let's say I'm in the military, and I'm sitting there and, uh, you know, our CO comes in and he says, okay, guys, yeah, FYI, we're at DEFCOM 3. So... For a military guy, what does that mean? Well, I was an officer, so it's different for me. I, we I got you. reinstated. It doesn't age doesn't matter. Then they there's too many people that play the new way, and when you're fighting um, people like that in rogue states, you have to have people that fought the old way. And I would imagine if they take them. The helicopter comes take me. They're taking my family too to D.C. to an underground tunnel. Um, I will be a, in the field supervisor. I, I I don't even know if I'd make it. I'd have, probably have to be out there. Right. So that, that's what it means for us. They call us up, so we take it real serious. That to me, that's one step away from nuclear war because when they go to the higher DEFCON. You just, it's imminent. So that's, yeah, so, that's uh, the death basically. The DEF 3 to me as a military man is imminent. 
Wow. Okay. So then, for what it means to you is like, hey, get get your get your bag packed and get yeah, ready when because I, when I called you today, I right. was serious. But I'm not running. No, I'm not going anywhere. I, I trust in the Lord about it. But I just don't want to get called out. I, I just don't. <clears throat> right. Well, I don't imagine that sounds like a a whole lot of <laughs> you know. No. There's. The demons have been battling me so hard; they've nearly walked me. <laughs> right, I so, understand. You know, I've thrown my hands up and given it all to the Lord. If, if it blows up, it does. I I hope it doesn't. And the American in me says it won't because we're in America. But that's deception. So I'm just gonna have to wait. The Lord hasn't told me what's gonna happen, and I haven't got no lies from them. Right. Nine well, and, and so so that uh, that message came into you today, and yep. you said National you had security agency and a central intelligence agency. Yeah, and once again, you know, and just because I know the the listening audience would 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 be asking the same question, you know, well, they obviously that if you are you're connected to you know, those organizations within the government for you to be on a radio show tonight allowing people to hear this information um, without you uh, suffering any severe repercussions from it has to be by design then. It has to be because I'm just laying it out the way it is. You know, I'm not a day. One thing, I don't know if you know some when somebody asks me a question about a date, uh, like this year, what's going to happen this year, I just tell them that the alien invasion is coming in the next weeks and four days. Right. Um, because that's all I do know. The Lord hasn't told me anything about when they're coming, but they're getting close. The alien interceptions are now hitting the computer. I got one on my phone just like you did. And right. And, and they're getting close. They're getting. The, in other words, you're hearing them organized. They they're so cocky now. It's so close. They don't care if you hear them or not. How do you like that? Right. Well, that's interesting because I've been get, I've had more of the same, and I've had so many of them. I just you know, I just kind of quit freaking out over them. Um, even though I did get my own confirmations. And I, I went to I went to the Lord for my confirmations, and the confirmations, and the confirmations I got were staggering, and I got them in front of uh, in front of witnesses. So that's what made it even more unbelievable was the way I got the confirmation. And by the way, folks, just for the record, the reason I'm doing this show, the entire reason I'm doing this show. Is because the Lord drove me to Amy's ice cream. He told me to get on the radio and tell everybody to prepare their hearts. There is an alien invasion coming and to be right with the Lord and to get right immediately and to repent with all of your heart and seek the Lord with all of your heart right now. Otherwise, I would not even be doing the show. That, is, that was... My directive. Now, I'm just going to... The alien invasion, to me, if you want to worry about something, would be more worrisome than a nuclear bomb going off here. Oh, absolutely. Even yeah. Though, and... You know, I'm just telling you what I've been told by the military, and I might be reenacted again as a colonel, full bird colonel, now lieutenant colonel, be a full bird colonel, and... and um, I have bad feelings about it, I think mainly because of the troubles that we're having. I don't think it will explode. Hopefully it is just a drill. And But I think the alien invasion is more um, lethal than any one nuclear weapon it would be. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's why, I mean, you it's know, uh, when people look up and they see that, no one's going to have a clue on what to do. There's nowhere to run and hide. And so in thinking like, about us when they do hide, that they heard it. Well, and here's the other thing, just for the record, for everybody that's listening, guys. Um, you know, I wouldn't believe this myself, just to be honest with you guys. I mean, unless, 
unless the Lord had called me in this supernatural way and unless, y'all have all seen the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and what's inside Akhenaten. And then, you know, it makes sense of everything else I've decrypted. I mean, it literally made sense of everything that I decrypt. It's the only thing that made sense of the Bible. I mean, Daniel 2.43, the last kingdom, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So, anyway, there it is. Um, yeah. So, you got that news today. Mm-hmm. So, what are your thoughts on on the immediate future? I don't know. I'm just being straight honest with you. Uh, it just depends on if we get it or not. And I'm just, you know, we've been praying today that it doesn't happen. But they've took this awful serious. Um, all the federal employees are not up to show to work tomorrow. You know how many billions that cost? Well, hey, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, whoa, whoa. All, the time out. Did all, you? All civilians that are employees, I, I have to read it. It might have said all civilians, but it says everybody, all personnel should stay home and that um, there is going to be unusual activity going on tomorrow. And they want people at home so that the government agencies will not let their people come to work. They're supposed to stay home. I mean, you say go- government agencies. Oh, yeah, they're I'm... shutting them all down tomorrow. So does that mean the post offices will be shut? I don't know. I think they're just shutting the, the D.C. down. But do you realize the billions of dollars to shut D.C. down? That leaves us vulnerable for anything. Wow, that's that's interesting. Well, that that should so be you something also we got you know. just confirmed by other people that I'm telling you straight up. They've told you the same thing. Yeah, I I did talk to someone else who who confirmed this and and who who said that yes, there's absolutely DEFCON three situation and. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't. I can't say that I, I know for, knew for sure about the uh, employee situation in Washington. But if that's the case, that should be evident um, tomorrow. I mean, it shouldn't be hard for any of the YouTubers out there or any of the, you know. Uh, well, here's what I'm saying, Johnny. Yeah. What if they've decided to take the DEFCON scale and use it for alien invasion? Oh, I see. You're 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 preaching to the choir, there, Chief. You know, you and I. That's why worrying a little bit. I'm not worried about the bomb. I'm worried about it being an alien invasion, if anything else. I doubt if anything will happen tomorrow. But I've been told to stay home. That they might they may have to come get me in a helicopter, and that if they called and I wasn't here, that I would be punished under the court martial of the UCMJ. Well, that so, doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It sounds well, don't bad. Go for, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to go running or anything. <laughs> Even if I did nuke it, I could care less. Um, but i just telling everybody not to scare you to let you know where we are at in the world because you probably won't even hear about it until tomorrow on the news if they right. say anything. And well, you know they will because they'll just say, I wonder what the lie is going to be. I bet it's going to be FEMA's doing an exercise, so we thought it best for the employees to stay home so they wouldn't be in the streets. Yeah, well, there, there's always going to be something going on. I mean, as far as I can't wait to hear know, what they say. Coming up with uh, some kind of, uh, you know, whatever. Some well, kind mine came official from the Department of Defense, you know, Department of the Army. So, right. I mean, I, there's uh, about. 600 names on that list, and I was in there. If your name is on this list, you're going. If we need you, we're calling not one of you, but all of you. So huh. they're not. He said they're not going to play favorites. If one goes, everybody goes. Right. Well, that's really interesting information. Yeah. Well, it's, it's it's on the heels of Johnny. What do you think about the 188 day cycle? You there, buddy? 
Well, you know, um, there's, you know, let's just put it this way. I, I don't, I see the charts that the guys like Lucas, I, I have a lot of respect for Lucas. I have a lot of respect for John Moore. I think they're incredible researchers. I know that Terrell has a screw loose, but he's an incredibly brilliant individual. Um, he's made some absolutely ridiculous claims about who he is and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, uh, let's just say, let's just call it the all-seeing eye. Um, you've got, uh, you know, his researchers and fellow astronomers are brilliant. Um, uh, they know what they're doing. Um, they, they, they work with the Marshall Masters team uh, back and forth. They collaborate. Um, you know, these guys are, are, are forces to be reckoned with when it comes to astronomy and understanding, you know, Planet X. Planet X is not a myth. Uh, you know, there's over 50 newspaper articles out there that you can easily get a hold of at Rabbit Hole 2. Uh, Lucas has done a wonderful job of digging up those uh, uh, newspaper articles, stuff from, you know, we're talking about highly publicized articles from Scientific American, uh, Wall Street Journal type articles that have been out over the last 30 years plus. And, and, they, and they killed uh, Robert Harrington, the head of the um, uh, United States Naval Observatory. He had arguably the most prestigious position in the world in astrophysics. And he announced in 1993 that he was going to retire from his position. And he was going to uh, take his telescope and move down to Antarctica to watch Planet X approach the Earth. 90 days later, he died of a fast-acting cancer. So they've been killing people and keeping this a secret. This is a big, big secret. The Nazi swath because of the black sun. The black sun is the worship of this Nibiru. It's the whole Sumerian God thing. Now, that being said, the 188-day thing. I'm not, I'm not real big. I'm not a mathematics type of person. That's what astrophysicist type people like to do. All I can tell you is that there is some truth to the pattern. Uh, as far as, you know, if you look at the 188-day mark over the, you know, all the way back to the Chilean earthquake, et cetera, et cetera, um, yes, there are some pretty significant earthquakes that occurred back then. And you've got the guys like Benjamin Fulford who believe everything is caused by the reptilian cabal and everything is harp and the underground hidden nuclear weapons and all this other stuff. And he's a new age, you know, he's, I, I, I think the guy's gotten a few extra chemtrails in his system. Uh, personally, um, but anyway, he, you know, so you've got all this disinformation and conjecture out there. Um, I think it's all of the above. I know that they use HARP uh, to exacerbate the issue, um, yeah, I and uh, I do uh, acknowledge that there is some merit to the 188-day pattern. It does look like it's legit. Um, I will say that today we were supposed to have seen a mega quake, and that the Oaxaca, uh, uh, Mexico. Um, you know, Acapulco area, that earthquake was supposed to have been a pre-quake. Okay, and so today we were supposed to have a big one. Now, the thing about the 188-day deal, anybody who says that, you know, it's because there's this, you know, lineup, this syzygy of Planet X that's supposed to, supposed to, this is a, this is a, a planetary object that you, you can't see it. Okay, I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, an object that they're having a very difficult time tracking. You can see evidence of it and its, and its uh, satellites because it's a solar system, supposedly. It's a miniature solar system. Okay, that's moving into our solar system. We're already well within our solar system. So um, you see the stuff at the New Meyer Station. You see the twin sun anomaly all over the world. Um, so it's there. There's no doubt about it. Okay, and it's close enough to cause problems. Why didn't we have a mega quake today? I don't know, but I will say this. The, we're, we're talking about the Earth's strata, the rock. To say that, you know, the, the, the pressure caused by, you can call it, you know, if you want to coin Hogan's term, terminology, you can call it a hyperdimensional torsion field if you want. I prefer electromagnetism. Whatever you want to call it, I'm not big on gravity. I think that that's a misnomer. But, but when these planets align, Yes, they influence each other. That's why we have massive sun uh, coronal mass ejections taking place like never before. Um, you know, they, they call it the NASA solar maximum for 2012, whatever you want to call it. You've got the first trumpet, which is the first part of the, the, the wrath of God that occurs after the opening of the sixth seal in Revelation 6.12. And that looks like it's probably going to be a massive solar flare. That could be... Uh, Colonel Ed, uh, uh, Major Ed Dean's kill shot. That I, could I, be. I, I, I went to his classes, uh, Major Dean's. I know him real well. 
Really? I don't yeah. believe in what he yes, does. I, I mean, I, I look at all that. I don't discredit any of this data. No, I'm at saying that. I don't believe in what he does. Say it again. I don't believe in what he does. You know, I, don't believe, I don't believe that anybody should be uh, channeling or doing all. any type of divinism or remote that. viewing or anything that could be even close to that. Because but that doesn't mean that it, just, because it, just because it is, just uh, because it is, you know, the power of Lucifer is tangible and it's real. So when you're when you're asked by Jesus Christ to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. You have to watch the enemy's movements, and you can't outright discredit the information coming from the enemy. So I'm not saying Deems is the enemy. I'm not saying anybody's the enemy. All I'm saying is, as a matter of fact, what most Christians are beginning to realize is a lot of the people out there who are claiming to be Christians are uh, in fact They're trying to make us look enemy. like idiots. Yeah, amen. So, so I, you know, we got to put everybody up on the shelf. I don't care if it's Ed Dames. I don't care if it's you, or Lieutenant Colonel S.C. I don't know you from a whole other ground, brother, but that's all right. Um, I'm just saying I put everybody on the shelf. I don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, I just put them on the shelf, review their information, become wise as a serpent, map it back to the 66-book canon to see if it has any merit. And if it holds water and it tracks back to the Bible, then, you know, maybe it should be considered as a possibility, but that's as far as I go. Praise Jesus. That's as far as I went with it. I won't say that we're going to have one explode. I'm just right. saying that this is, so, this is so unusual, it's got us all. Well, yeah, and, and, and I'm, it's, I need to jump in just real briefly because, you know, just, and we talked about this before the show. I talked, uh, I talked with the colonel about it. I talked with you about it, Johnny. I've talked with other people about it, and I'm just, just going to say, you know, as far as Jonathan Clegg goes, here's the way I look at things. Look, um, there was a date um, that um, was uh, November 11th, 2011. Now, there were so many things that were converging on that day with a bunch of Mayan elders walking across the U.S., arriving on 11-11-11 after walking across the U.S. with their crystal skulls. And there's all the New Agers saying it was their day to ascend into their new spiritual being stuff. And all these other data points that were all coming together. And there were just too many things pointing at a possibility of a false flag event. Now, because of the, I, I guarantee you, the $50 bill has an image of the Hoover Dam blowing up. Period. It does. It does. Yes, it does. It's why it's the only dam built with explosives in it, by the way, folks. I yeah, don't know so if you could release it. I don't know if y'all know that, but the Hoover Dam was built with explosives in it. Now, I also know that the $10 bill has an offshore nuclear uh, event that is destroying New York City. And the reason I know that is because that was a spiritual gift. Now, either I'm the most wrong guy in the world, and none of those things are on the, on the money, and that's not the Twin Tower bombing on the 20, and that's not the, that's not the Pentagon bombing on the backside of the 20, and that's not the Federal Building bombing blown up on the old $20 bill. When you flip it over, that's not the Federal Building blown in half. Either that's all wrong, or it's all right. I'm going to have to go with it's all right. It's all okay. right. I know it is. And so here's the thing. But the day 11, 11, 11. Now, did I know that something was going to happen on that day? Absolutely not. Did I believe it was? Absolutely did. And so it was, it was a requirement of me to step out and say, do I believe something may happen? You betcha. I think something may happen. It, yes, I do. There's all these things that point to it. Is it possible? Nothing's going to happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's possible that day could come and go with nothing happening. And that's, that's why I, that is the stance I took. By virtue well, of the, the fact I'm taking on that it, that's, where I, that's where I'm going right now. The, the whole idea that I have another source that's very credible, who I, who I believe, that has told me that this DEFCON 3 situation is real, that is enough for me to say, I believe it's okay to talk about it 
but not freak out about it because does everybody remember the conversation we had before this show started? It was about that. We are not given a spirit of fear or timidity, and we don't have to freak out. We can stand and, and trust the Lord. Go read Psalm 91. And, and, and put your trust in the Lord, no matter what comes down the pike. If you're saved, hey, you know, Paul said it the best, to, 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 to live is Christ, to die is gain. Okay, I know, look guys, I got four kids. Johnny knows me really well. He knows that, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've had to deal with a lot of anxiety over the years. You know, well, I know God promised me my kids. He absolutely did. And I've been through all this court stuff. Johnny's watched it. Johnny's watched the torture. Well, you know what? I trust the Lord, and I'm going to trust the Lord with everything. That means my kids. That means my uh, freedom. Uh, whatever he wants. And, and let me give an example. Guys, Dan, uh, uh, Joseph... When Joseph was thrown into a pit, he was sold as a slave, he was falsely accused in Potiphar's house, you know, he ended up in a prison, even after he interprets the guy's dreams in prison, the guy that's the cupbearer to the Pharaoh, you know, he ends up not remembering Daniel, but because it was, I mean, he's not remembering Joseph, because it wasn't the right time, but when the Pharaoh had a dream... And it disturbed the Pharaoh. Remember, that's when the cupbearer said, Oh, wait, whoa, wait a minute. I remember this guy, Joseph, down in prison. That guy's the guy that interpreted my dream, and he was right. And that's when it was time to get Joseph out of jail and become second in charge of all of Egypt. By the way, guys, he was a convicted felon on attempted rape. And he became the second in charge of all of Egypt. Now, here's the point. God knows what he's doing. He knows when he's doing it. He knows why he's doing it. And he knows what the purpose of doing it is. So, I'm going to take that stance. And I'm going to put my trust in God the same way. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff I don't like I see going on in my life. And I'm, you know, I'm just going, well, whatever. Okay, Lord, you're in control. But I do know what he promised me, and I'm taking him at his word for it. And I do know what he's shown me. He showed me sheep and goats. Most Out of everything he's shown Jonathan Clegg, the number one thing is sheep and goats. Okay, if you want to know the place in the Bible that talks about sheep and goats, it's Matthew 25. And that's the coming of Jesus Christ, to separate the sheep and goats. So, that being said, I think just in the interest of making sure everybody hears what the colonel has to say, and that he has been alerted, I think it's important that we go ahead and pass the information along, same as I passed along on 11-11-11. He's not colonel. the only one that's saying something along this line. Um, and again, this is just another source. I'm not saying the source is a good source or the source is a bad source. I'm just letting you know there is another source that's saying something along this line. Uh, this is from, and you know, you may have an opinion about this person, and you know what, quite frankly, I don't care. <laughs> you can have an opinion if you want. I'm going to let you know what the, this person's saying. This is Pamela Schufer from AmericanHolocaust.blogspot.com, uh, and, uh, and uh, she says that she has, a, I'm quoting this quote, I have a special forces friend who lives in Kalispell, Montana. He just called me with major news. He has a friend who works in the prison system in Montana, and they have been told by, quote, big government uh, to be ready for an event uh, to take place sometime between March 13th through 23rd, that the event is supposed to be very earth-shattering, and that they were told to stock up on six months worth of food, diesel, medical supplies, water, and other needed supplies, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, you can take it however you will. Um, you, know, all, you know, these kinds of alerts have been coming out for a really long time. Right. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, but here's the thing. What you should really just ask yourself, you know, is, uh, you know, it says right here uh, in, in the scripture, Luke, Luke uh, 12, um, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, verse 20, 28, it says, And do not fear those who can kill the body, but can kill the soul. 
but rather, uh, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. There is going to come a point in time. Okay, we've been having martial law alerts and end of the world alerts, and you know, Lord knows, I mean, I've, I've written over 300 media articles, and a very, very large percentage of those articles were run for your life articles. Okay. Right. I, I am guilty as charged. Okay. I I I have done made every mistake that you could possibly make running out of fear. And again, the scripture is very clear. We were not given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You don't have a sound mind when you're running around in the street going, Oh, oh my God! Get the kids! Let's make a run for it. Where are you going? Where are you going to go? If Dimitri Dudamins. Um, visions are with the angel, the angel that took him around more than once across the United States and showed him that the United States is, Jeremiah 51, the United States is the great Babylon of Revelation 18. That's a fact. The, the United States is going to burn in a single day. It's going to be a thermonuclear war. The Russians and the Chinese are going to bomb this country into uh, a fire. It's going to be a bunch of ashes. It's all in the Bible. Where are you running to? And why would you want to live on an earth? What are you going to do with your kids? Walk around in a nuclear winter hunting for a grub under a rock to eat? By the time we get to the sixth trumpet, judgment, wrath, wrath, that sixth trumpet, remember judgment. This is how it works. God has judgments, but he also has wrath. Judgments have happened all throughout the history of the earth, but wrath is a subset of judgment, and it's the worst kind, okay? And trumpets, by the sixth trumpet, one-third of man, that's two and a quarter billion people on the face of the earth, will be dead. Right. Do you want to hang out for that? Do you want to be here for an alien invasion when the dragons of Arabia, reptilian, draconian, 30 million of these freaks come here and start slicing and flaying the skin off of your children in front of you and ripping the arms and legs off like it says in Isaiah and Micah 3? Is that what you want to stay here for? No, you need to get yourself right with Jesus Christ now. Because and you we do need, not know if that's going to happen tonight or not. And we need to get others ready. Yes. Others ready. Hallelujah. Uh, now, this is where I'm going to jump in real quick. Here's the point, folks. Uh, you know, Johnny, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to testify right now to what I know about Johnny, my friend on the phone here. He is highly concerned about the safety of other people's other people. At the end of the day, Johnny and I do not agree on everything we talk about, but that's okay. Because we both have the same heart. We want not one person to be involved in the wrath that is coming. We do not want one person to get tricked. We don't want one person to get sucked into the wrong New Age philosophy. We don't want one person to lose their soul because, you know, we've made the wrong, you know, decision on giving out information or not giving out information or whatever the case may be. We take it very seriously that we have to stand before the Lord. Now, that being said, the number one thing here, in my opinion, is that we all are looking for lost sheep. Lost sheep. Because our own salvation is, once it is secured, then we need to go get the security of others and bring them into the fold. That's what we're here to do. The story of the talents isn't, that you had a successful YouTube channel or radio. It's how many souls did you get? When you went fishing, did you catch anything? Well, you know, if you, uh, you know, you could take the same uh, spiritual gifting and you could really blow it with the gifting, just depending on how you handle it. And I think uh, that scares me to death. I think, uh, you know, Clay will give a witness. I live in utter complete fear of God. I mean, I love God. I love God. But I know that God can do anything he wants. And I do not want to lead one person astray because of my own 
Jonathan Cleckishness. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. we all have our own ishnessness, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? We all have it. So I, I guarantee you, uh, Mr. Johnny, his his number one intention that I've seen is uh, to get people out of the fires of hell and point them towards Jesus Christ and to get them saved. That's also my goal. And my goal is to expose the darkness and to prove to prove that it, the darkness is real, that the devil's real, and also once you know that, you know that Jesus Christ is real also, and you can turn to the one that can and save. You. And that's it, guys. I mean, that's 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 the job. That's what we got in front of us. So let's say, Colonel, I know, I know you're there, and I, I'm going to pull you up here in a sec. Let's say the Colonel's right, and let's say this DEFCON three. Uh, it is is definitely the real deal, and it is because all hell's about to break loose in the next couple of days. Let's just say that's the case. What should you be doing? Everyone that's listening by phone, everyone that's listening by the radio, uh, computer, whatever. What is it that you, in your heart of hearts, should do? Is there someone you should have talked to? Is there someone you should have said, you know what, you might really go watch, you know, Johnny Baptist, he's got a really good series on this. Or I read, I read one of his articles that, man, it hit home on this. You know, you know each individual. Everybody knows people. We all know people. And we all have friends or family or, you know, people we know. And we know kind of what kind of, you know, uh, worldly angle they're at. You know, some people are into this. Some people are into that. And so – you can direct them and say, hey, you know what, uh, since you're, you know, into this, you might go look at this video that Jonathan Kleck did on the U.S. currency. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you might just consider that all the stuff that you've been shown through these different sources would fall onto, you know, to your responsibility is what I'm trying to say. You have a responsibility also in this late hour to try and be leading people to Christ because the day is coming that this is going to happen. That's why I'm doing this radio show. The Lord told me to get on the radio and tell everybody there's an alien invasion coming. Guys, I'll be honest with you. I did not want to do that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be, you know, you know, I, you know how many people call me a, just a, a freak, psychopath, you know, I've all this other stuff. Other I, I mean, I'm so one. severely hated and, and ostracized. People saying stuff like, your kids need to be taken away from you. You total effing, stupid effing this and stupid effing that. I hear it all the time. But you know what? The Lord told me to do it. So here's the question. What's he telling you to do? And by the way, guys, unless I knew 110% that it was the Lord that told me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. And it's only by virtue of the fact of the way he told me to do it. Because it was so impossible, I was like, holy crap, you got to be joking. And when, uh, when, when my kids all thought at the same time, they were just jaws hanging open. So, you know, I could not not do it because then my kids, would, you know, they'd say, hey, Dad, what, what are you doing? I'd say, I'm yeah. risking your eternal souls, kids. <laughs> so I stepped up, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. But here's the point. One day it's going to be here, no matter what. So and we won't. it might be a call to go out and preach the gospel, guys. Do you know what I'm saying? Colonel, you want to jump in and say anything to everybody on what you think? Yeah, I think this alien invasion is going to come. No lie in December. Hello? Yeah. You hear me? Hello? I can't hear you, Colonel. Are you there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, Colonel, your your microphone is... Oh, hang on one sec. How can you hear now? me? Now yeah, I can hear you. Over here. Can you. Could you all hear anything I was saying or no? Yeah, we can hear... I can hear both of you guys talking just fine. Okay, okay. Colonel, well, go ahead, brother. My take on this thing is that I worked on the evil side. I worked in the underground tunnels. And I worked at Area 51. And they're there. 
And I swear to you, I'm just telling you the straight up truth. We're going to have an alien invasion, and it, you need to avoid them at all costs. Avoid anything that opens up the door to it. Hypnosis, anything. Because right. Look at Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know what that showed you? Remember um, the kids' toys and everything turned on and all the doors slamming and this and that? Right. Remember? Right. That tells you what do you think a ghost is now. It's a, it's a, it's an alien. It's, it's a demon. That's what a ghost right. is. Because that, that just proved right there that it, that's where it comes from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, there's disembodied spirits, and that's that's biblical. I mean, you know, there's a whole slew of them that got cast into a herd of pigs. Well, when the herd of pigs are down, where'd they go? Yeah, they're running around here doing what they can. Hey, Colonel, people in the chat room are asking if uh, you can maybe talk just a little bit louder. They're straining to hear you pretty hard. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's a lot better. Amen. Anyway, so, yeah, so, by guys, I'm going to repeat what he said. He said he one thing he can guarantee you is that an alien invasion is coming. Now, by the way, guys, a while back there was, uh, I don't remember exactly how I got the information, but the buzzword around the Pentagon was the Sumerian gods are returning. Now, you know, I mean... Honestly, once again, you know, unless I was decrypting hieroglyphs that show aliens inside human bodies, I would, you know, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could sit on a radio and tell people that this is happening. Does anybody hear my voice reverbing? No, it was earlier. It's reverbing now. Anyway, I'm, I always have weird stuff happen to my computers. Yeah, yeah it's constant. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, it's coming. And, guys, that is the message I'm supposed to give you. That well, is. Let me tell you the reason I'm telling people about it. I'm not telling them to scare you. I'm trying to unscare you so that it doesn't bother you. I've been trying for five years on the radio to unscare people about the reptilian. I've stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of them, and they can't do nothing as long as you've got Christ. They, none of them. Right. They're all one race. They're all demons. That's a race to me, a race of demons. And right. that's what these um, UFOs are and things, and they're real. You might as well accept the fact they're real because you're going to see them. And they wreak havoc on people's lives. They're not here for any good. Stephen Hawkins agrees with me on that. Stephen Hawking? Did you say Stephen Hawking? Yeah, he agrees with me. I emailed him and he emailed me back, and then on his show yesterday, we got to see him, it was odd, oddly enough, and he did say, it was about UFOs, he said extraterrestrial life, they need to be avoided at all costs. <laughs> yeah. and that, and that's, yeah, that's definitely not a good <laughs> I don't see myself having a burger with one. <laughs> yeah. I sure don't. But I have a lot of information, and it gets overwhelming sometimes tell but it's just truth and i just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of of that well i god bless you and i thank you uh colonel for coming on um uh i thank you for willing being willing just to step out and and at least tell people and by the way like i said guys i went to another source that told me the same thing and this is a source i trust and it is a source that has the avenue to know that whether or not this is true. Well, before I go, this is what you got to do. you got to do like you did. You call and tell me something. I'm just going to believe it until I have it confirmed. Right. you get deceived if you don't. See, I don't get offended at all by him checking it out. I've had people do background checks to see if I, who I am and everything else. And, um... Right. Yes. No. Right. Well, this is you know it is what it is, and it is what it is. But I'm I'm calm about it, and I believe me, I've seen them, and they will scare you to death. Now I'm telling you, and I've seen them in a controlled condition. So imagine being in an uncontrollable condition and seeing them all right. 
you're going to the store just like normal or the mailbox, you look up and they're all around you. Right. Well, and I can relate to that because I've had my own experience the night I got saved. I, I, I woke up and I woke up into a uh, a pack of, you know, demonic police that oh, yeah. were well, all... The, the Cuban Hawkins just turned out show also said that he believed that, um, let me see how did he put it, um, you know, I would have forgot right at the last second there. It was something that would confirm what we said. But anyway, yeah. I just want everybody to know that, you know, and we'll do a show sometime if he wants to, and I will go into the black ops part of it so that you can know how they operate. The reason I tell people about black ops isn't to show off. It's to show you how they operate, if you get what I mean. you got to know your enemy, how they operate to work around them. I got people in the chat room I looked over there asking, what do these creatures look like? They look like very similar to the reptilians on V. The oh, movie. in V. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I only saw Somewhere the... Up there uh, and others, there's insectoids, you know, and there's uh, the greys and the talls, you know, and all that, Palladians. They're all the same group, man. They just shape shift. I'm just going to tell you some, just right now, the wildest thing you ever heard. They shape shift. And werewolves are real. <laughs> I found that out from James Casbolt, and everybody knows who he is. And hey, is he still alive? Hello? Yeah, is, uh, is Casbolt still alive? The, the word no. is that he got killed over in his uh, flat did. in the UK a few months ago. Yeah, he did, and I read an email. Somebody said it was sent by him, and I read it, and he would have never said such things. I knew him too well. Right. He wow, really? Yeah, me and James were good friends. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, he used to call me, and we'd try to walk it down with hypnosis, but try to think back and bring back memories. Uh -huh. We helped each other, too, a lot of stuff. That's very interesting. Because once I, the truth does set you free, because see, when they abduct people, they don't remember, and that's the whole key. As long as you don't know the truth, you're going to be tormented by it forever. Right. So ponder on it and ask God if they've abducted you. He'll tell you. People need to go to him just like you would a person sitting in front of you, because he'll tell you anything. You right. Know. Right, and well... I, I just want everybody to know, it. like I say, Jonathan, we can do a show one day, and I'll, I'll go through all of that in detail right. about, about Dulcie, what goes on there. Right. You, just wouldn't, you wouldn't believe what goes on. It's really going on out in the open. It's just nobody will do anything about it. Well, so, that, you're, uh, so, you're, so what you're seeing is that the Palladian, the, uh, the Palladians... Uh, and it's not just the Pleiadians, it's the Andromedans and all these other, and I, I'm fully aware that, you know, that it's a, it's a, you can call it an Andro-Pleiadian, reptilian, hive mind, uh, conspiracy if you want to call it that. But what you're saying is that these are, that it, even when they manifest as Nordic type entities, you're saying that it's still the two-legged serpent creature, the Nakash, that are shape-shifting into yeah. this humanoid looking exactly Nordic. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. That matches the Bible perfectly. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell everybody, when you, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's just different shapes and colors. And and you're going to get yep. scared. I'm not scared. I've seen pa a sky full of UFOs landing at a place where I was at, you know, guiding them in and stuff where they should par pull in. Yeah, no lie, watching all this. So I've seen him, and, and it still scares me. I'm still afraid of him. But oh, yeah, we're going to have anybody who, and there's no, and it's very difficult to tell timing-wise exactly what's going to happen first, second, third, whatever, you know, uh, whether or not. The other thing is that, you know, we know when the wrath of God is, again, it's in Revelation 6, 17, the day of wrath has come. So it's right there. It's very specific. The wrath is, is when the trumpet judgment kicks off. But we don't know for sure if there are going to be global earthquakes, tsunamis, and other, you know, the kickoff of World War III, Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39, we don't know for sure 
what's going to happen per second. We don't know when this alien invasion is going to happen for sure. We know that Second Ezra chapter 15 speaks about the dragons of Arabia um, flying like winds and the chariots and stuff like that. So we know that it's coming. It's in mm -hmm. the Bible. Um, you know, it's, it's all over the Bible. So, so we know it's coming. People are going to have a depends moment. I call it a depends moment. People are going to freak out. The, the, here's the thing. If you're, if you're in a situation where, you know, the ground is shaking under your feet, you need to be on your knees in prayer because you don't know if that split second of time might be a turning point. You know, you need, okay, let me give you this example. You don't know what the Lord has in plan for you. You don't know at any given moment of time. You need to always be in communion, spiritually in communion with the Lord. You need to be in prayer and praise all day long, every single day. You need to be in constant communication with the Lord. You've got to be in complete repentance at all times. Okay, to assume that you are going to be uh, considered part of the, you know, the bride of Jesus Christ is that's a, that's a dangerous assumption because there's seven report cards of the churches in Revelation two and three. There's seven report cards, and only one, the Church of Philadelphia, only one gets to make it out of here. Okay, the rest of them have to stay for the Great Tribulation. Okay, read about the Church of Thyatira in Revelation two six. All right, now anyway, the point I'm making is get yourself holy now. Get the sin out of your life. It says in, Revel in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, we're supposed to hold every thought captive to obedience to Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to avoid the behaviors in Colossians chapter 3, the first couple of paragraphs, and Galatians 5.19. Read them. Get yourself living holy. It says in the scripture, be ye holy, for I am holy. It doesn't say try to be holy. It says be ye holy, for I am holy. That's a commandment. Okay, get yourself right, because guys, you're going to have a depends moment. The earth is going to shake under your feet. And running around like a chicken with your head cut off and screaming and packing up the kids and, ah, oh, my gosh, that, that, is, that shows an unbelievable amount of respect for your king, Jesus Christ. And, you, you know, again, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all things, in all things, acknowledge him, God, and he will direct your paths. That is how we have to live our lives. Will you be afraid? Yes. You'll be scared. I'll be scared. Jonathan will be scared if he's here. We don't know. But we got to be prepared spiritually and get on our knees. Our, our knee-jerk reaction, pun intended, should be to go to our knees in prayer and praise when the crap hits the fan. Praise Jesus. I agree, Johnny. And that's that's where we started tonight is is trying to get everybody away from the knee jerk reaction of, of the world. And you know, we've seen a lot, you know, I've heard over and over and over and over again, uh uh, you know, here it's coming this day, this day it's coming this day. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's coming guaranteed. So therefore, if it's coming guaranteed, what is the best thing you could do? First of all, you make sure that you're saved. Once you're saved and you're in the lifeboat, you got to get life jackets to those that are floating in the water. And you need to get a life jacket on them, and the name is Jesus Christ, and you need to get them into the boat. That is that is what we got to do. Um, right now, you know, I, uh, I, I can't even tell you guys how weird – how weird it was that the colonel called me today because the, it's right in line with what I was talking about. Once once again, it's one of those super duper natural, you know, synchronicity issues going on. And and by the way, you know, I, I've also, you know, the communication thing around here has been, and in the presence of, you know, witnesses, Clay is a witness and Joseph is a witness, that our time is imminent. It's imminently in front of us. Now, um, guys, there's a DVD that will be ready tomorrow. It, the content on this DVD will, is, is gonna put me in jeopardy. Um, I need, uh, those of y'all, that want a DVD? See, here, here's the issue. I'm going to post the DVD on a site, 
It's going to be available to download. It has to be available for people around the world just to go download it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on site public. And then the next thing I'm going to do is start sending them out. And I've got a bucket of, I mean, I've got a lot I've got to send out already. And I'm going to start sending those things out. And then last of all, I will put it on YouTube because the attack is going to happen. I guarantee it. Now, anyone that, anyone that wants to jump in at this point and support more DVDs being produced, please jump in. And if you go to jk at jonathancleck.com, you can go to PayPal and do it there. That the email address associated with that account is jk at jonathancleck.com. And you can, and, and we need it. I'm telling you straight up right now. We need some backing. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, I stepped out on faith last week and I handed off some money to someone that needed some help and, uh, it had to happen. They needed it. It was a rent issue and, um, you know, I'm just trusting the Lord to make everything happen. But I'm going to come under attack. I guarantee it. Oh, when I all do see, after every show I go on. Right. So, you know, I, I think, uh, also, you know, um, guys, uh, Colonel, your wife is terminally ill. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah it is. Do you have what's your uh, what's your email address? Um, Greg Renchich at live dot com. Spell it. G R E G R E G R I N C H I C H at live dot com. Let me type it in. Greg wrench it at live dot com. Yeah. There's the colonel. The colonel's wife is terminally ill. Uh, guys, um you know, I just I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, if we can help others, help others. I know Johnny Baptist has literally saved me from being in the gutter. In the gutter. Um and it was a not a little save. It was a big save. Anyway, so the DVD's ready. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be drugged by the organization of Catholic priests <laughs> yeah. into uh, into court. <laughs> into the kangaroo Hitler court. Yeah, I will be drugged into the kangaroo Hitler court probably over some of the stuff that's in it. By the way, if you go to jonathancleck.com to watch this, to watch this video, you will have to check a box, and you will have to, uh, you know, uh, check an acceptance box that you are over 18 just to watch this DVD, just to watch it. Um, uh, it's only mainly one part in the beginning. It will be the beginning decryption scene. Um, you'll see my big screen of my computer, and I told you all there is some stuff I haven't shown you yet. And um, I did, you know, I had to show you. I, I had to come out. The Lord told me to. I had to, okay? So anyway, there it is. I'm just letting you know. Uh, it's it's um, it's very uh, sick. That's all I can say. It's very sick. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. And uh, if, it, if it helps one person get saved, um regardless of what it's going to, the doors it's going to open against me, well, amen. By the way, guys, I want you all to consider this. As as people that have come to this program and people that have, you know, been supportive of me, uh, first of all, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because uh, I'm always a step away from freaking out with Johnny and going to a mental institution and seeing what's on the mush pee menu for the day. Um, and uh, what? Johnny I said, "Yummy." Yeah, Johnny and I have discussed <laughs> a variety of must pee recipes, by the way. But uh, the reality is, um, uh, y'all know I have three kids that are constantly under assault by uh, you know their mother. Um, and she has drawn pictures of them that are identical to the hieroglyph that I decrypted, just so you know. And she has lost two lawyers during the process. 
One died of a drug alcohol overdose. The other one lost his license to practice law for what he was doing in my case. Now she has one that's worse than both combined, and I'm constantly under attack from these people. And uh, the Lord has guaranteed me, though, my kids will not be there. Um, however, this is what I want you to consider. Consider the fact that I have that going on. Consider the fact that I am under a microscope by the judicial system when it comes to three kids and these people that are going to go, you see, we told you about this guy. Okay, never mind the fact that I have passed three MMPIs, that I've been declared completely stable, but these people that are consummate liars and very demonic people, um, they, are un they are on the attack mode towards me. So you understand. Now think, what would it take somebody to be posting these videos that I'm posting and to be saying on the radio what I'm saying in light of the fact that I'm living in this kind of a situation? You think about that, and then you'll realize, what do I have to gain? Here's the answer. Souls for Jesus Christ. And I trust God that much that I will step out as far as I can, no matter how far I have to stretch my neck, to get this information to you so you understand it and so that you believe it. And I want you to take it to the Lord yourself and test it against Scripture. But I'm doing it because, hey, I answered to a, a God that, um, you know, he put his son on a cross for me. And, uh, and that's where my devotion lies. And so anyway, that's why I'm continuing to do this. I think Johnny can say the same thing. Johnny, you might want to take a few minutes. Uh, we got 17 minutes left and tell the people why the hell you're doing this. <laughs> hey, before you say anything, yeah. do you want me to go ahead and go? Cause... Colonel, if you want to hang, go, I got your thing in the chat room. Anybody okay. that wants to contact the Colonel or... or uh, it is, you... I'm trying to... I got a person here Okay. has got leukemia and I'm healing them. I'll let you go, brother. It's no, it's no big deal. I mean, uh, I want to come back to your show, though. Yeah, absolutely. Just go ahead and do what you got to do. Okay. Take care. Thanks, yeah, thank Colonel. Thank you for being. Let me. God bless you, brother. Everybody. Yeah, you and if you're not, look if you're not whisked away, and we'll get together and we'll talk, you know, about the other stuff soon. Okay. Yeah, All right. Be great. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. All right. God bless, Colonel. Oh, man, God bless him. You know, goodness gracious, uh, guys, there's so much going on. Hey, Johnny, so anyway, so why, why are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> well, it, you know, it, start, it starts out one way, and then as you progress spiritually, it changes. Um, you know, that's all I can say. I mean, uh, it starts out, most, a lot of people start out their Christian walk because they, you know, we're in different situations, you know. Some a lot of people, it's because they were sitting in a church and they started to feel guilty and convicted of sin, and they walked up to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Hopefully, they stuck with it. Um, you know, that the, for me, it started out, you know, kind of as a research hobby, you know, looking at the New World Order, you know, and and all that stuff. But you know, over the years and years and years, I, I that went by, I progressed, and now I do it out of a combination of love that that didn't happen though it didn't happen overnight. It's an empathy. It's a it's a horror. I know it's coming upon the earth. Right. I know how horrible it's going to be, and my love for my fellow man is it, 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 you know it, 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 when you pray constantly when you know it, it says in Proverbs it says you know the beginning of wisdom is fear and fear in the Lord. The beginning of wisdom is fear in God. Okay, so when you, you, and it goes through phases, it starts out and you kind of progress. It's, some churches and some pastors and teachers refer to it as sanctification process. Okay, w w but you grow. Now, at, I've finally reached the stage, you know, and I've been at this stage now for quite some time where um, I am scared to death for people. I, I you know, anybody who is willing to take a chance 
on being cast into the Great Tribulation, like the Church of Thyatira will be by Jesus in Revelation 2. Mm -hmm. That's a punishment. That's a punishment from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, your God. Your God. Your King, your Master. You know, a lot of people beat their chest and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a Tribulation Saint. Well, excuse me, you're going to volunteer to be a Polish virgin. Really? Wow. That's got to be a huge disappointment to our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. So, I mean, guys, I am so, and I'm, I'm scared to death for people. I've spent hours crying. I've fallen to my knees. I've gotten up out of my office where I'm sitting right now, where I've done six years of research reading about what's going to happen to people. And I've literally walked out of my office and fell to my knees like a nervous breakdown, losing control of my emotion, because I'm I know what's coming upon this earth. I know better than most people, like like this Lieutenant Colonel I see guys talking about. You know, I, I all I can tell you, I can't attest to the guy. I don't I don't know. Like I said, I don't know the guy personally, but I will say this: my research matches up with the stuff that he's saying, and it's horrible. And that's going to happen. It's got, you know, no one's going to survive. Very few people are going to survive, and the ones that do survive are going to probably be killed. Well, they're only, anyway, I, just, you've got to get yourself, you've got to get off this alien, demon, infested rock now. You've got to get yourself, the only escape from what's coming up on this earth is a very close and loving relationship with Jesus Christ. This is your only shot. The rest of it, it's death. It's death, it's pain, it's misery. Read your Bible. Read Revelation 8. Read about the trumpet judgments. Look at what happens to the people who are tortured by locusts. Yeah, that that's, is, you know what, that's a scary one. You know what, King, let me jump in real quick. You know, yeah. guys, there, there was a part of the hieroglyph I just could not decrypt. I was like, what in the world is that thing behind their neck? The king and the queen. And I was like, it looks like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was like, it looks like they're wearing racing scarves or something, you know? And, okay, guys, I started looking at this one part of it, and I was like, son of a gun, that is a stinger. It's a stinger, you know, like a bee stinger. I, I've looked at a stinger under magnification, and it's got these little barbs on it, you know? It looks like a, kind of like a, you know, uh the thing they throw at a well, a harpoon, yeah. Anyway, and, and it, it has these little harpoon hooks on it. And I saw that. I was like, what, what is that? And then out of nowhere, I was like, Lord, I just can't figure it out. Um, Barbara, and, you know, I haven't talked to Barbara in a while. But Barbara, uh, one of my subscribers, she sent me a thing on DNA transcription. And, I mean, uh, my jaw fell open. It, it was DNA being transcribed i guarantee it and man then i got the confirmation i mean the lord totally confirmed it seven ways from sunday and then i knew what it was in in you know revelation 8 is that you know is, is that where the locusts come out the from the bottomless pit is that yeah that's yeah which which i i firmly believe that that is going to be nibiru i, I don't believe it's on the earth if you read it very carefully you'll see that there's no, you know, the, the text does not indicate that the bottomless pit is on the earth. It does say that the angel comes down to the earth, but that doesn't necessarily mean the pit. The pit itself is on the earth. Right. I believe, I believe it's Nibiru. Um, there's a reason why they refer to it as a prison planet. Um, there's a tremendous amount of evidence when you research, you know, uh, about these entities, these alien entities, these shape-shifting two-legged serpent creatures spoken of in Genesis 3 as the Nakash. That's right. the Hebrew word for what they are. They are shape-shifters. Um, and, um, man, you know, I think, I personally believe that, that they're going to be released from Nibiru, and they're going to, I mean, come on, why, why the second Ezra 15? Here it says right here, verse 28. Behold, a horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, and they all and all they which hear them will fear and tremble. Those are the people, those are the tribes of the earth, those are the people. That's, that's your next door neighbor, man. 
That right. is your next door neighbor. That's your cul-de-sac. Your cul-de-sac and is going to be standing outside, looking up in the sky at UFOs, swarming down and slaughtering everybody in the neighborhood. And, is and that what you want to be here for? And check it out. And that that passage, guys, I'm not kidding. I And I'm not kidding. When I took hold of what was going into the back of the neck of the king and the queen on the hieroglyph, it's a stinger with DNA. And I went, wait a minute. It says men will be stung, but they will seek death, but they will not find it. And I was oh, like, God. it's got to be horrible for five months, John, for five yeah, yeah, months. Well, well, I know. well, check this out. What is the only way that you could seek death and not find it? Basically, if you're incapacitated to a degree, what if your DNA is changing? You know what hey, I mean? Listen to this, Jonathan. Dude, I, when I saw that, I was like, ah, what? You're going to freak the... out. Jonathan, anyway. listen to this. Here, here's your Lady Gaga race with an array stuff. Okay, get this. All right, we know about in September, you know, or we know about February 14th on the uh, on the uh, on Jay Leno show that Lady Gaga came out and you know the whole race, the birding of the race within a race, and the whole whatever. Okay, now get this. So this guy comes out with a book. His name's Richard Butte. Okay, and he and the name of the book is Cosmic Cosmic Consciousness. And a quote from the book it says, "Quote." This new race is in the act of being born from within us. Right. And in, and in the near future, oh, it gets, it gets better. And in the near future, it will occupy and possess the earth. Wow. Yes. And that matches, dude, check this out. It matches the red and blue star Kachina prophecy in the Hopi, where it says, quote, Many will appear to have lost their souls in these final days. So intense will the nature of the changes be that those who are weak in spiritual awareness will go insane, for we are nothing without spirit. They will disappear, and it goes on, and there will be many strange beasts upon the earth in those days, some from the past and some, the, some from the past, there's your Nephilim, and, and then some that we have never seen before. The nature of mankind will appear strange in these times, and we'll walk between worlds, and we will house, our bodies will house many spirits, demons, with in our bodies. You don't want to be here for this stuff, folks. No, you don't. So anyway, you know, I could we, we could go for another two hours right now that now that we crack this one open. But guys, my whole thing is this. And when you see the new DVD, you're gonna see the race within a race. That's the whole thing. It's Mystery Babylon. I mean it's the world that's been created by a slave race, which is us through this satanic demonic spirit using us as fit extensions to do his bidding. And that's it. And it's all about to go, guys. I, I mean, I, I'm like the the ratter outer of the devil. I mean, that's what I do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to prove to you he's real, and I'm to show you how he hides his plans. He turns everything upside down. So, uh, oh, yeah. And, dude, I could just keep going now. You got me all fired up. But um, anyway, so what should we be doing? We got six minutes left to go on the show, and we need to pray. Ready? We're both going to pray. Johnny, I'm going to pray, then I'll hand it over to you. Heavenly Father, God, I'm asking you to forgive me for all my sins, for any sin I'm committing against you. Anything that I'm doing against you, Father, bring it to the front part of my mind so that I can repent of it and turn it over to you completely. I'm asking this for all the listeners, that they do the same, that they come before you in complete and utter honesty and admit anything that they're doing that's wrong. And even if there's a question of whether or not they're doing something that's wrong, Father, let them lay it before your feet and look up at the cross and realize that the cross paid for it. It's paid for. However, we are required to appropriate what has been given to us and to walk circumspectly in these end times and not be deceived and not to fall away. Um, not let our, our hearts grow cold because of iniquity. The Bible says in the end, many hearts will wax cold because and the love of many will wax cold because iniquity will abound. Father, please let us realize that iniquity and sin is what will make our hearts wax cold. And so to turn it over, all of it, any sin, run away from it. Turn and run the other way, folks. Turn the other way and run from sin as fast as you can. Do not entertain the thought of sin. When the thought comes in, take it captive. Pray about it. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Father, let us all repent with all of our hearts and turn to your Son 
with all of our hearts. I know the hour is late. And I'm just asking for forgiveness for myself, for my children, for my listeners, for the people that have stepped up, for the people that are reaching out. Open their hearts, open their minds, just to receive you and to receive your peace in this late hour. I want to pray for the colonel. I want to pray for the colonel's wife. I want to pray for all those people that are in the armed services right now. God have mercy on them. God have mercy on them what's coming. I want to thank you for Johnny Baptist, my buddy. I want to thank you for the other people that you brought into my life that have been such great helps to help me along the way because I would have got, I would have fallen. I would not have continued. So I want to thank you for the support that you've given me. I pray also, Father, according to your will, you put it on the heart of whoever needs to help support this project so I can send out as many of these things as you require. Um, Johnny, why don't you jump in, buddy? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to dump down your Holy Spirit of a powerful anointing upon every listening person, every person yes, that's remember this audience, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the abundant grace to dump down yes. upon them, give them peace, peace that passes all understanding, be on their hearts and minds through Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, yes. God, we're asking for a supernatural outpouring. Father, yes. we're asking for every vessel Father, to be filled of every listener of this audience, Father. Yes. In the name of yes. Jesus, yes. we ask for the saving grace of yes. your yes. atonement to yes. come down upon yes. every yes. listener so that yes. they feel yes. the power of the Holy yes. Spirit yes. come yes. upon yes. them, so that yes. they feel the peace, yes. so that they feel yes. the anointing, so that they know that yes. they know yes. that their salvation yes. is at hand. Father, that it is part of their being, that they can trust in you and know that they do not have to live in sin anymore because the price has been paid to Palestine in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Johnny, praise God. I was buzzing, dude. Oh, my gosh. Just praise God. Ah, dude. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. Amen. Praise God, guys. Um. I love you, Johnny. You're a, you're a good man. You got a good heart. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Um, yeah, yeah. The colonel's wife is very sick. Um, he's got a lot on his plate. Um, you know, if it falls on your heart to um, help him, help him, um, help. You know, maybe anyway. Let's, why don't we pray? Why don't, will you let me uh, lead in a prayer for his wife? Yeah, Johnny, I'm kind of fumbling around trying to do that. Yes. Yeah, amen. Praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we know that the vast majority of sicknesses that come upon come from the come, come upon the humans that come upon us in our flesh and our flesh bodies are a result of attacks from unclean spirits and spirits of infirmity upon us because of the accuser father god and even my own mother father i stand before you knowing that even my own mother had died at an early age because of sickness we, we just don't understand all of it but father we're going to claim the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to claim Isaiah 53. We know that by your stripes, Jesus, that that we are healed. Now we have to reach out in faith. But Father, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to talk to the problem. We're going to talk to the mountain, Father, with faith. Okay. I don't know. I don't know your name. I don't know what her name is. But but Father, does anybody drive us in? Do you know what her name is? No, but we got 60 okay. seconds. That's all right. Amen. Praise Jesus. Um, wife of Lieutenant Colonel S. C. Unclean spirits, spirits of infirmity, we command you to leave in the name of Jesus. We bind and cast you out, and we send you into the abyss in Jesus' name. We command spirit of cancer, spirit of sickness to go in Jesus' name. You are never to come back. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we command the body to heal, the bone marrow to heal, the blood to heal, the cells to heal. In the name of Jesus, the power and the healing power of the Holy Spirit is down upon her now. In Jesus' name we pray and we claim it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Father. If it be your will. Praise God, man. I'm buzzing. I'm I'm I don't know, guys. I don't usually speak in tongues on radio, but that was kinda cool. <laughs> Amen. Dude, that was good, Johnny. I'm buzzing. We love you guys. We got ten seconds, man. Five, four. We love you. Two, three. Okay, we love you guys. Good night. Thanks for joining us.